If you want to put a lot of people to work all at once, build something. Construction projects create a ripple effect of economic activity. A quick drive around Metro Atlanta and you'll see and hear it in full effect. If you own a construction firm, it's a good time to be in Metro Atlanta. Some of the projects in the works include two major sports stadiums with accompanying facilities that boast restaurants and retail, corporate campuses for Fortune 500 companies, hotels, and apartments. It's clear the industry is finally emerging from the doldrums of the Great Recession, but that period of inertia would lead to a loss of talent, a challenge that still remains. During this time of active building and development, contractors lament the difficulty of finding experienced workers. Small construction firms tend to be more agile and can therefore manage the lean times better than some of their larger counterparts. One man who knows a thing or two about being agile is David Moody. He's the president and CEO of C.D. Moody Construction. His path to success was laden with some splinters and nails, but also some good fortune. His story in today's Executive Profiles. So you were a stud quarterback coming out of high school. Well, I don't know about a stud quarterback. But That's I was what a, I heard. Yeah, but I was a quarterback at uh, Ann Arbor Huron. Uh, in fact, my famous thing that I enjoyed about that, I played against Tony Dungy in high school. I came to Morehouse. It's interesting how it all happened. Uh, they offered me a scholarship, and the football coach was very smart. He took me to Spelman at lunchtime. I saw Spelman College in 1974. Never saw the practice field or anything, but I signed my letter of intent That's great. Uh, to come to Morehouse. And as they kind of say, the rest is history. So out of college, you go work at Bechtel. Right. So, you know, in 1981, I finished my degree in architecture from Howard University. I had finished Morehouse in 78. And I took a field assignment out at Bechtel. And um, at that time, you know, architects, we still had to draw by hand. We didn't have the computers in CAD. So it was a gang of drawing tables and we sit there and draw all day. And my dad always taught me, he said, son, you take any assignment they want you to have. Don't be landlocked, you go. So opportunity came, they needed an architect to go to some nuclear power plants. Nobody would volunteer because nobody wanted to go live up in no man's land. Well, listening to my dad, raised my hand, and there I was out there in a nuclear power plant. And they are humongous, but Going there is when I found my true love and passion was being in the dirt, the bro, the, we call them brogans, but the work boots, mm -hmm. the khakis, the hard hat, the action, the noise. And that's when I realized two things. One, I was not going to be that good of an architect. And two, I could be a great builder. So I took that knowledge of architecture and went into construction. So I worked for Beck for a few years. Got married in 1982, and then in 83, I moved to Atlanta. So I left a great job at Bechtel. My wife had a great job at the University of Michigan, and I came to work for a small firm. And I told them how great it was going to be, life was going to be great. And two months after I, I started working for the small firm, it goes bankrupt. Now I got to go home and tell my wife and my in-laws, long distance, I don't have a job, and I don't know what we're going to do. So I started walk, working for some small companies and over the next three or four years, my wife and I decided, well, we're so broke. I mean, we were broke. I, we went from doing really well to broke. But the job that really did, kind of made me decide to go for it, I was working for a small firm and the owner of that firm also owned a bail bonding company. But the construction company was in the back of the bail bonding company. So one day they needed an extra body on a, on trying to get, catch somebody who had jumped bail. Guess what they called? The project manager. Sure. So they give me this jacket and they say, Dave, you know, you're a big guy. We want you to back door this building. I'm thinking to myself, he comes out, he's free because I'm sure. not trained for that. So that's kind of what got me to go into business for myself in 1987. And um, my first job was underground Atlanta. Right. And uh, I will always love underground Atlanta. I was scared to death. Uh, my first contract on my own was $86,000. And to me, when I signed that contract, I had signed my life away. And from there? And from there, we've worked on some uh, incredible projects. List them, please. Oh, uh, gosh, let's take Phillips Arena, Turner Field, Federal Reserve, Atlanta International uh, Terminal. Uh, we're doing Atlanta History Center edition now. We're going to do Cyclorama. I mean, we've been involved 
every high and, profile and, and some project. Some of the best projects, but what I love about construction is that every day is a new day. Every day is different. And it's great to be able to get outside whenever you want to, to go see a project and just to see it come to life. I mean, we're partners on the new Falcon Stadium. I mean, how cool is that to think, you know, we're building a new Falcon Stadium. I mean, I just love uh, construction. There's nothing better. I know you've got a heart of gold, okay? Right. Let's, let's start off with the heart of green. You committed to one big check. Tell uh, us about the big check. Well, to Morehouse. Um, you know, Morehouse meant a lot, means a lot to me. Um, because if it hadn't been for Morehouse, I wouldn't be where I am today. And, you know, I committed to, you know, seven-figure gift. And um, it's just great because you know you're making a difference in people's lives. And in closing this interview, I want you to tell the story of how you're transforming young people moving forward. Well, one of the things I'm really working on, I, I just am um, com completing a pro uh, program at Harvard called the Advanced Leadership Initiative. And it's for leaders who want to make a difference in the world. And what I'm working on is helping childhood sexual abuse survivors. Uh, I'm one myself. It took me 45 years to say it publicly. It took me 26 years to ever say it out loud. So one of the things I'm really working on is letting myself be a, what I call almost like a science experiment, so people can really see what you have to go through. I suffer from post-traumatic stress syndrome. Uh, I've suffered through panic attacks. I was able to get through everything I needed to get through and build my business while really I was falling apart. But what I realized, when you're going through something like this, you want to know there's somebody else who's been there who tells the story so you know you will be okay. So that's why I tell the story, even though it's emotional for me to do it, it's for the right reason. Because so many people can't get through what happened. And I want people to see you can still have a great life. You can still have a great family and you can give back, even if you never speak up about it. But just know you're okay. So that's really where my focus, besides my construction company, is really helping sexual abuse survivors be all they can be. And also anybody be all they can be. Because we all have a story. David Moody serves as chair for the Metro Atlanta Boy Scouts of America. He recently completed that Harvard Advanced Leadership Initiative he spoke about. The program helps prepare experienced leaders to take on new challenges in the social sector. His project, MoodySpeaks.com, is a website to help others heal from childhood sexual abuse. Next, since the advent of the Affordable Care Act, insurance companies work to keep pace with the influx of new patients. Patrick Crosby takes you by the numbers to show how the medical industry is adjusting to the new changes and what it will do to the cost of coverage. Stay tuned. Atlanta Business Chronicles Biz will return.